Multisystem Inflammatory Syndrome in Children, or MISC. And as the COVID pandemic continues and we see more presentations of COVID and COVID-like symptoms in children, I wanted to do a quick video talking about this emerging inflammatory disease in children and adolescents. Severe lung involvement with acute respiratory failure is the most common complication of COVID-19 in adults. And many of these patients have complications in multiple organs, including the heart. In contrast, most children and adolescents with severe acute respiratory syndrome, SARS-CoV-2 infection, have mild COVID-19 that does not actually lead to medical intervention. However, a small proportion of children previously infected by and or exposed to SARS-CoV-2 do present with a collection of symptoms including cardiovascular shock, fever, and hyperinflammation. This is MISC. But as I mentioned before, this is a rare complication. As you'll see, incidence of COVID-19 infection in adolescents less than 21 is 0.322%, and incidence of MISC is 0.002%. So this is about 2 per 100,000 adolescents. Furthermore, MISC does look like other diseases like Kawasaki disease, toxic shock syndrome, macrophage activation syndrome, and cytokine release syndrome. However, this is a distinct disease. For instance, Kawasaki disease is an acute necrotizing vasculitis of unknown etiology, and toxic shock syndrome is an inflammatory reaction caused by bacterial exotoxins. And this is not the same underlying pathophysiology of COVID-19 in children, um, it, which presents as MISC. So what is the pathophysiology of SARS-CoV-2 and MISC in children and adolescents? As a quick reminder, this coronavirus is an enveloped, non-segmented, positive sense RNA virus, and we know that it invades host cells via the angiotensin-converting enzyme 2, or ACE. So this essentially enters the surface epithelium of the lungs, heart, and other organs where this ACE receptor is expressed. And once this invades, it replicates and causes a dysregulated immune response. So uh, it involves the release of cytokines, including TNF-alpha, IL-1-beta, IL-6, and this causes an acute inflammatory response in the body, which then leads to this cytokine storm that can end up in organ failure and death, as you see in the picture here. So this is how you get this systemic multi-system inflammatory immune response. And as you can see here, it includes things like the brain, meninges, pulmonary edema, you have skin changes, you have kidney injury, you have signs of shock, and you can really have any organ that's affected. Now, since this is a multi-system inflammatory syndrome, you can have features in really any organ system and really kind of any inflammatory presentation. Uh, some of the most common ones are persistent fevers, and the median duration is four to six days, as well as GI symptoms of abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. And these are kind of the two most common presentations in children specifically. However, you can also see rash, conjunctivitis, mucous membrane involvement, neurocognitive symptoms such as headache, lethargy, confusion, respiratory syndrome, symptoms, sore throat, myalgia, swollen hands and feet, and lymphadenopathy. So how are MISC and Kawasaki disease different? How are they related? Well, as mentioned before, MISC is this multi-system inflammatory syndrome mediated by the cytokines, cytokine activation, cytokine storm, and Kawasaki disease is defined more of as a vasculitis. And MISC in terms of the epidemiology is more in children who were more than five years old, previously healthy, whereas Kawasaki is less than five years old. Also, MISC affects more black and Hispanic children disproportionately, whereas the demographics of Kawasaki disease is mostly East Asia and children of Asian descent. MISC also affects more commonly the GI systems with GI system side effects. And Kawasaki disease has these five classic symptoms of conjunctival injection, oral mucous membrane changes, peripheral extremity changes, polymorphous rash, and cervical lymphadenopathy. Finally, MISC has more generalized myocardial injury effects, such as acute myocarditis, whereas Kawasaki disease classically has these coronary artery aneurysms. 
However, it's important to note that in terms of this heart complication, uh, they really can kind of have this overlap in, in terms of heart complications and, and sequelae. So what the CDC says is that patients with MISC are less than 21 years old. They've had a fever for more than 24 hours, one day. They have elevated laboratory evidence of inflammation. This can include anything from increased CRP, ESR, fibrinogen, procalcitonin, D-dimer, ferritin, LDH, IL-6, neutrophilia, etc. Also important is that there's at least two organ systems involved, that these patients have features of severe illness that require hospitalization, and that they've had a SARS-CoV-2 infection or exposure within the last four weeks. So this can include a positive SARS-CoV-2 RT-PCR, serology, or antigen test. And in terms of the presentation, this can include uh, shock, elevated troponin, elevated BNP, abnormal echo, arrhythmia if it's cardiovascular, respiratory would include pneumonia, ARDS, pulmonary embolism, renal would include AKI, renal failure, ne neurologic would include seizure, stroke, aseptic meningitis, hematologic would include coagulopathy, GI, which is the most common, as I mentioned before, would include abdominal pain, vomiting, diarrhea, elevated liver enzymes, ileus, GI bleeding, and dermatologic would include erythema, mucositis, rash. And I included as well the, the WHO case definition. Uh, as you can see, it's very similar, uh, similar age. They just cut off at 19 years old. Uh, similar fever requirement, only WHO requires multiple days. And similar for multi-system and inflammatory involvement. Now, the goals for treatment for MIC are to decrease systemic inflammation and restore organ function in order to decrease mortality and reduce the risk of long-term sequelae such as the development of coronary artery aneurysms or persistent cardiac dysfunction. Now, the management of children with MISC depends in part on the clinical presentation. So this would be distributive shock versus cardiac dysfunction versus Kawasaki disease or similar inflammatory or non-inflammatory presentations. But these can overlap, so you really just have to really treat the presentation and, and kind of treat them as you go. So. Some interventions such as antibiotics, IVIG, and prophylactic antithrombotic therapy are important for the majority of patients with moderate to severe manifestation. So you'll see here, IVIG is kind of the first, first initial frontline treatment, and this is for Kawasaki disease, this is for MISC, and this is for a lot of these systemic inflammatory responses that you'll give IVIG. All patients meeting criteria for Kawasaki should also receive aspirin therapy uh, which is well-known and pretty common, IVIG plus aspirin. Uh, moving further down, high-dose corticosteroids is another uh, indication treatment for MISC. And for refractory cases of MISC, some potential therapies include anakinra, which is an IL-1 receptor antagonist, and tocilizumab, which is an IL-6 antagonist. And this is based on the idea of reducing this inflammatory cytokine storm. Our knowledge of MISC and complications of COVID-19 infection in children are ever evolving and new information is released monthly or even daily. But a recent review of cases of COVID-19 in children uh, found that the majority of these children were admitted to the ICU and the majority also presented with shock. Uh, and so they confirmed that all the children had fever, most had abdominal pain, diarrhea, abdominal symptoms. And in terms of the sequelae, the complications, uh, the majority of these children who had an echocardiogram test had an abnormal echo test, so abnormal heart function. And this is important to note uh, because a lot of these children could have long-term heart uh, damage and long-term heart complication later on. And, and this could include things like depressed ejection fraction, uh, which is reduced ability for the heart to pump oxygenated blood to the rest of the body, or even coronary artery aneurysms, which is commonly seen in Kawasaki disease. So as we know more about MISC and COVID-19 in children, how it presents and the effects that it has in children, we will continue to update the presentation of this systemic uh, syndrome.